This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 646 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with the crew and ready to talk pro wrestling for the week of some sort and variety. First of all, with us from Poughkeepsie, New York. He's the only Mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. And I am not to blame for all of Raw's woes. <laughs> That's good. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, also with us back in the studio is Larry. So, <laughs> Jeez. I might have something to do with some of Raw's woes. Yes. He's, he's commuted all the way up from the basement. Yep. So, Jeez. Uh, Also, we have a special guest with us. He is the manager of MT OSHA. Uh, in uh, Fight Society and Black Diamond Wrestling, and though we've been sharing the videos over at IndieWrestling.us. And you can see a lot of that on the Indie Wrestling Network. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but Ronnie Starks is with us. Hey, everybody. Did you guys see my cup? Oh, look at that. Wait, what? what is this? Uh, this is the uh, Guinness World Records cup. Camera's right there. I don't know where the hard cam is. All right. It's right there. I'm already fucking the show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lowest rated show of the year, guys. So you have the trophy for the Guinness World Record uh, Battle Royal. Well, uh, let's be honest. I stole it from Bohemian. You stole it from Bohemian. And I'm also drinking his beer that he left here, too. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a two for one. I love you're using it to hold his beer. <laughs> and I'm going to drink his beer, too. <laughs> thanks for, oh, shit. Hold <laughs> on. Oh, it's getting fuzzy. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. Are you only allowed to drink Guinness from that? Uh, oh. 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 Oh, whoa. we just messed this up now, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> okay. a, that's a that, cup, that violation. Cup is tainted. Violation. God, I, I have the violation center. I'm not giving myself a violation. He tarnished his cup. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he won it, he tarnished the cup, guys. It's oh. Okay. <laughs> just kidding, bro. I love you. <laughs> you know, I. I understand. Like, I, I think I heard a story that you were like very close to also winning that. Cup. I was, <laughs> which is why I actually have it with me. Uh, yes, yes. Well, I don't. I don't want to ruin the magic. No, 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 no. But... but, but I just, I just know that there was a little something of a little like almost connection that you had with that. So this is rather fitting that you have this now. Sh- short story. Uh, my name was on the right below or right above his. Yes. So I was one number away from winning the Guinness Book of the <laughs> World Records Battle row. And Dan Sandwich will not let me live it down. He yeah. reminds me. He's like, hey, you remember that one time you almost won the Guinness Battle Royal? I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. It, it'll haunt me for the rest of my life. Probably. It will. It will. I might not give this back. I think it's actually officially mine. There you go. He's just not getting it back. He's been carrying that everywhere. It too. would make one hell Has of a hard hat. You want to try it all? Yeah, yeah, try it on, try it on. Okay, so, uh, Ronnie, we we did an interview with MTO show a bit ago on Andy Mayhem show. Of course, they, well, he's got a, he's got his hard hat, he's got his vest, he's got his violations. That, is a, that, way, that was a good oh, shit. I think the, head the headphones are screwed. Yeah, the headphones that, right. that doesn't help either. This is why we can't have nice things. No, no, Here. no. So uh, we're gonna be talking wrestling with Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, get the beer back in the yeah. cup. <laughs> Make sure that we have a Guinness. Uh, listen, a couple weeks ago we had a we had an Emmy in here thanks to. Uh, 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 Jordan Styles on the, on the uh, uh, Brohemoth video game stream, and now we have a Guinness World Record trophy <laughs> in in studio. It's it's amazing. We've won none of these things, but and technically, I am a Slammy Award winner. Technically, that's yes, right. Buying it from Shop Zone doesn't make you a Slammy Award winner, pal. No, no, but being in the crowd that won the Slammy does. Oh, well, okay. There you go. I take that go. back. There you go. He's like, <laughs> I love it. You were just adding these on for him, but anyways. It's on my resume. <laughs> People are challenging. Me. It is on his resume. That's great. <laughs> it's on that LinkedIn profile, pal. 
<laughs> Anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you to our friend Basic Sickness for the intro and outro music of the show and a few other podcasts that we do here. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where you can find the uh, links and subscribe to us in podcast and video form. And look us up on your favorite platform. And please give a review, give a like, give a share to anybody if you're liking what's going on here this week. And you can email us at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. I know Tina gave us a great big question last week, and uh, you guys can do the same. And so we'll see, if, see, what you need, we'll see what you can do to help stir the pot and get uh, things going here on the show for us. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. I know it's been a little quiet on Mondays because I'm taking a mental health break from Monday Night Raw, guys. At least, like, watching it, like, the right way and... Doing the show and everything because I guys I just need to take the December off. I'll, I'll be back in January, I swear. Um, He'll and, be and, gone in December. He'll be gone in December. You tell him, Royal, you'll be gone in December. Thank you, Wycliffe. Uh, and also check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, page and group. A lot of great discussions happening over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. Everything from bad tattoos to interesting memes about Roddy Piper and Ric Flair. You can also see us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. on the Facebook Live at Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're on other feeds, too, on the Sorgatron Media, social media, including their Periscope, um, the Twitch page page uh, for Sorgatron Media, Mixer, and a few other ones. But of course, the chat is over here on the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, You can also, if you want to be in the audience during any of our shows um, and hang out with us or have any uh, uh, questions about uh, advertising with the show, you can hit up that email address as well, goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and chat with producer Missy. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, including our friends at the fan of the show $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby F, J-Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. At the Pocket Club $5 level, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, Billy Effin Johnson. So, um... And, of course, you guys can support the show, too, if you find value. If you get some entertainment out of this at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Um, we should probably hold on. I was going to I was going to shift gears from what I had in the notes here. But now I kind of don't want to mind. Uh, we kind of made some jokes about it. But, yeah, we, we is raw in the draw in, in the just the December doldrums right now. Raw is snore. <laughs> Like, we kind of had the magic. We kind of, like, slid past it last week. But it has been, like, several weeks of kind of the worst stuff. We had the, the it seems like every, I know, uh, Mike, you got in a kind of back and forth with uh, Matt Carlin's about um, kind of the, the talent and in and, and this thing. Was it you or him that was talking about it seems like every few months we just, like, read the, the I, Twitter I comments? That. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of explain that a little bit. So, all right. It's like, it, <sighs> Every couple of months when Raw goes in kind of a shame spiral that it's currently in. A shame spiral. I like that. A shame spiral, yeah. Um, there's always someone, be it John Cena, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns most recently. Like, They're going to take whoever is the most popular babyface mm-hmm. or should be the most popular babyface and just have them say, Hey man, there are a lot of problems with this show. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. P jokes. Blah 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 blah. Like it's it's the worst kind of self referential humor. Mm-hmm. Because for for a couple of different reasons. One, it doesn't serve Seth Rollins the character. Okay. Because if he was just talking about the um, Corbin and Lashley and Drew, which I don't have a clever name for them yet. I'm going to say corn beef hash. Uh, so, so you're talking about like <laughs> like he was making reference to the pee jokes and everything, and like why storyline wise? Well, it's does a, it, do, do we have not, like it's we, not even the pee jokes too, like because if he was just talking about corn beef hash doing all the attacks and everything, mm-hmm. okay, that's within character because Seth Rollins is standing up for guys like. Balor and Elias and and the like. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But then he brings up the P jokes, which, okay, 
you could say maybe, maybe Corbin said to to Drake, like, hey, it'd be funny if you stole Bobby Roode's robe and pissed on it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe you can say that. We're we're talking but, more content than the the diabolical structure of a GM. Yeah. Yeah. But when you bring up Lucha house rules, mm-hmm. which I think we'll all agree is dumb. Mm-hmm. You should not point out that if you're saying this is Baron Corbin's fault, that he's allowing a trio's team of faces to beat the revival over and over again. Because A, Seth Rollins should be happy about that because the revival are heels in theory. And two, why would Baron Corbin be helping the Lucha House Party? Well, but although allowing the Lucha House Party rules would be a determination by the GM, and really we get in our who's the who's the bad guy here because I feel like you know it's like no revival is the ones getting screwed here, right? Yep. Yes. And and then it here's the biggest problem with it: just because you address it. If you don't do fucking anything about it, mm-hmm. guess what? It doesn't mean a bit of difference. But we did it's have. Like, a, well, it's like beeping your horn in traffic. It's like <laughs> yes, we acknowledge there is a problem. Seth, Seth slamming was just beeping horn, his horn on the interstate. Sl- slamming on your horn ain't gonna do jack shit. Like, if, if you really want to get out of traffic, you pull off on the next exit and you find another way. So you're saying Vince McMahon needs an Uber. I'm saying he Vince needs McMahon needs to, to drive. stop looking. He needs somebody to drive for him. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure he has that. That's true. Yeah. Um, it, it seems, and this is the thing that's getting tough for, for all of us, I think, watching this show, right? Um, and, and, and that they acknowledged the ratings dumping was interesting, too. Uh, me, well, is, yep. is SmackDown doing okay? I never hear about no. SmackDown ratings. No, they're not. SmackDown, SmackDown's doing about the same as what it always does. Okay, okay. so it's not it's not doing worse. No, no, no. It's it's maintaining. So I mean, enough that they're not getting killed for. In in, in, in yeah, I mean, SmackDown isn't the lowest rating SmackDowns in years. Mm-hmm. It's been about steady, depending on what's happening. I love this argument in the chat room. Like people are saying, "Well, like, well, Triple H uh, is killing it with NXT," and then uh, um, Shane's saying NXT doesn't draw money, bro. <laughs> so, and plus, uh, they only have to book one hour's worth of TV a week. Yeah, it's a yeah. little bit easier. It's a different. It's a different scale, right? Yeah. But all that adds up when you have all these little things that bring fans in. I'm gonna, and, and also, I'm gonna make speaking the, of NXT, yeah, what's up? What's I'm going player? to make the argument that they can't use what we have to do three hours of live booking as an excuse for bad television mm-hmm. because they've been doing it for years now and they've had good segments. They've had good shows. You know? Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they know how this works. They can't string it's, it together yeah. three hours of good, but, you... but yeah, but three hours of shit is different. You know, yeah, like you yeah. can get a few hours of good in there every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Elias can only save your show so many times. <laughs> right? You're not wrong. I'm, no, no. That's usually the, the, the... And honestly, even Elias is wearing a bit thin. It's because they turned him. Well, yeah. no, not because they turned him. Because, and, and this was something I said um, in a conversation with Matt, there's nothing to fight for. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to fight for because all your main eventers are going after the IC title because the title they should be going after isn't going to be on television until January. They're having a ladder match where the win- uh, whoever gets to the guitar first can use it as a weapon. Yeah, we're, we're making up things they're to put in a ladder a guita- match. They're, making, they're having a guitar on a pole match. Um, they're also having a TLC match with nothing being hung from it. Wait, wait, who's doing that one? Corbin and... Braun and... Uh, Braun. Braun and- uh, raw act, raw general manager elect Baron Corbin. Really? That's not even like a contract hanging or something. Nope. Really? Yeah. That just doesn't pin. seem right. In or submission. So it's like an indie wrestling uh, TLC match. It's ju- yeah. Hey, it's we just... can't hang. We can't hang shit from the ceiling. So we're just gonna have TLC as in 
while you have a ladder table and chair, have fun. Yeah. Guys, it could be worse. We can have Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. I'd rather see that. Really? I'd rather see Leo Rush on a Bring forklift. Leo Rush on Ooh. a forklift? Dude, yeah, Sting can do like a 450 off the forklift. What is happening? So we got Leo Rush is getting matches now. Drake, Drake, Drake Maverick. Um, is getting matches. Is Mustafa getting matches. Ali is getting matches. Mustafa Ali against uh, Daniel Bryan going tonight. 205 going away. 205 is, is integrating right now. Hashtag, hashtag 205 dead. They're coming tra- in 2009. They're turning them into the Hornswoggles. The Hornswoggles? They are the Hornswoggles of, D- of WWE right oh, now. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. They are. Well, Mustafa got a good showing at least. Yeah. Mustafa had a good match with Daniel Bryan. Good. That means he's going away first. <laughs> No. <laughs> look at the odds. You had a good match. Sorry, kid. We're going to have to get rid of you now. You look too good. Too good. I, I, th- I think Daniel Bryan's going away sooner than Mustafa Ali is. Really? Yes. I thought they, like, uh, I'm, I I'm still on the idea train that this is Daniel Bryan's last run. And he, like, as part of his last run, he has a list of guys he wants matches with. And we're just running through all of them. <laughs> Mustafa Ali. No, seriously. Well. I'm seriously. Mustafa Ali. I guarantee we're going to get Rey Mysterio sometime early in 2019. Okay. Like, I truly think that Daniel Bryan is going to have a career. Like, that's why they turned him heel. So he can lose his career in a match. Well, speaking of things coming up here with WWE, the rumor train is running. Of course, uh, there was an article that was uh, submitted on our Wrestling Mayhem Show group. I really need to put names by whoever put, did this. Um, it looks like uh, WWE may be working on a Queen of the Ring tournament in 2019. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a replacement for the May Young Classic, maybe. Uh, but uh, it, it would be more, you know, thinking... They're looking for new ideas, supposedly, other than Evolution. So maybe we'll have more women's only content like pay-per-views and stuff like that. But it's not a new idea. It's not. No. Okay. It's not. It's, it's not, not even, a new idea. A, and you it's know not what even a new remotely idea close to a new idea. A new idea would be writing stories for the women's wrestlers. Just having a tournament with no storyline isn't going to fix any problems. No. That's why the Mixed Match Challenge sucks. Oh. It does. I haven't caught up with it myself, so. You say no. You, you don't need to. No. No, I'm telling you, the finals are going to be Mahalisha versus R Truth and Carmella. And two of those people are going to be number 30 in each rumble. Huzzah! Oh, uh, dancing Ellsworth over in no. the Queen of the Ring. Nope, we don't mention him. Nope, yeah, he's kind of off the list now. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of people who are off the list. <laughs> By the way, um, all the people who we don't aren't allowed to talk about on the show mm-hmm. are, um, I'm making a stand, not allowed in Mayhem Mania. Oh, yeah, good call. Fair. Good call. Not Fair. allowed. Fair. Good call. I, I, it's going to be down to uh, Matt Carlin to make that call, but um, I think he'll enforce that. So, uh, But Bart Gunn is still safe. Bart Gunn's still safe? <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. So is Stephen Amell. <laughs> and honestly, Stephen Amell would put on a better match than the three people we're not going to talk about. Okay. We have three? Uh, we're not going to talk about it. Um, well, well, we'll see what happens with that, with the women's then. Uh, also, as I dig in here, so uh, this was a fun one that was shared. Did you guys see the Up Up Down Down video where they visited the the largest video game collection? I, I watched both parts of that. Oh, I was part wanted, two out? Yeah, I wanted to dive into to, into my computer screen. It was, um, I think it was it was either Collins or Chad that were talking about. It was like it, it was it was interesting to see AJ Styles, Kofi, and. Um, and Xavier Woods geek out about the video games like people that meet him geek out. <laughs> meet well, them geek AJ, out. AJ has a whole series on Up Up Down Down called Retro Styles. Oh, yeah. Where he geeks out about everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of fun to watch these guys just like completely fan out about video games. So because it's just like, okay, that's us, right? So it's, it's been fun uh, to do that. And, and I know I dropped into the latest, like um, they had Edge and Christian on there, too. And they look like they're playing like NHL '96, <laughs> so yeah, um, always a fun thing for that. Also, side note um, for you guys, um, um, longtime listeners, uh, Heavy Metal Jesus is now WWE Canon Mike. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our, our friend Logan Chulo, his old gimmick with IWC before he was Elias, got mentioned 
on the Edge and Christian show this week. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, all right, we got a few more stories to poke with. Ronnie Stark's with us, hanging out with his cup. Matt says we have to earn our eliminators. Or earn no, our I, eliminators? I, I'm not saying they're eliminators. I'm just saying it's a gentleman's agreement. I, I'm kind of with that. I'm kind of with that. I'm saying it's a gentleman's agreement. Like, if we, if we don't mention them by name on the show, we shouldn't put them in the card. <laughs> he also says, sorry, Wendy, I, fit, I, sent fi- I spent 5K on a Jaguar. <laughs> oh, Wendy! <laughs> oh boy uh hey guys uh if you guys are <laughs> into uh uh indie wrestling or some alternatives because some other thing is to watch on monday night one of those options is the indie wrestling network it's www.indiewrestling.network we got a lot of great content on there including uh just added we're starting to put up the latest renegade wrestling alliance and international wrestling cartel shows Last month, the November shows are up there right now. And we are looking to um, also release day and date with the video on demands. The latest from RWA and IWC and Rise Wrestling, Rise Wrestling with a Y, will be part of that as well. The second anniversary from just uh, two Saturdays ago for Rise that that feature uh, ECW original Chris Hamrick and uh, a casket match between Christian Noir and Matt Connard and Super Hentai against uh, Brandon K. Uh, and so much more is a part of that. Five ninety nine. You can go start your seven day free trial, and it's still out there, guys. I I, I might have to do this sooner or later. Uh, Shirley Doe and Duke Davis, of course, have Duke and Doe's hardcore memories on the on the network, and they did issue a challenge. If we get two hundred network subscribers, we will attempt to book. And I say attempt because I don't know if she'll say yes. Kimona want to Leia on Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories. She's going to dance atop the Mayhem Studios. Potentially. And if not, Sword will do the exact same dance. Aye, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Where is no that you'll have to order now. the VHS to find out, guys. That, that's going to be pre-taped on the Christmas special. Jeez. <laughs> but it's a uh, Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories as well as Breakfast with Champions, where we had the IWC, KSWA, and Rise Grand Champions eating cereal and talking about their careers. Part two will be coming soon. I know two of those guys do not have their belts anymore, but we do have the conversation in the can with them. Hey, man, you listen to this conversation from WrestleMania all the time over dinner between these guys. So, hey. Uh, that's coming soon. Plus, so much more wrestling action. Black Diamond Wrestling, the latest uh, 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 edition of that from Christmas Chaos, is up on the network, featuring Ronnie Starks as a part of that. I know you got involved in the last match out there. Uh, I did. Can I just mention how much that referee sucks? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, did you hear me scream at him? I did. I was so mad. He's like, "What are you doing?" I don't I'm know like, if it's on the tape, but I legit like I, I'm going to tell everybody this. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say he blew the finish, but uh, I recall screaming. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's a fucking disqualification. And I rolled off the ring. <laughs> he just looked at me. He's like, oh. I'm like, ugh. Indie wrestling, guys. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. So <laughs> you get you get, you get all of it. But there was also um, um, Brohemoth getting beaten with a Christmas tree. Oh, so great. Uh, which led to you know him leaving his cup that Ronnie Starks now has. I and he's drinking, I don't know drinking his beer out of. <laughs> yeah, you do. You've had it the whole time. Yeah, I mean, you know where it's <laughs> been the exactly last week. Where it's been. That's not the open one. I don't want to open it? another beer. I'll be like, oh, I guess I got to drink them both now. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to drink two beers in two hours. You can see that action oh, no. oh, shit. all there as a part of. Can't take me anywhere, guys. I'm so sorry. All is a part of the Indie Wrestling Network and so much more. Check it out. Thanks. Sure. And of course. The Legend of Virgil and Montreal Theory already a part of that. PWO TV, some Premier Wrestling and Prime Wrestling. They'll be uh, adding. Everybody's opening the beer. Are you opening <laughs> the beer for him? No, I told him he can have one. Oh, uh, yeah. You, know, you did never drink beer on the show. This what? is a first. Yes, look what I did. Merry Christmas, everyone. Man, never what? been offered beer on the show. Starting so early. Like, happy Kwanzaa. Wait, it's, happy it's, Kwanzaa. It's, it's, it's happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> um. Anyways, there's a lot of other news from the week, guys. Man, I don't. Uh, Sixty-nine years old, Ric Flair is apparently clear to wrestle. He had, don't. He, yeah, don't. <laughs> he had a health scare. Apparently, uh, as somebody mentioned in the comments, uh, um, uh, Sh- Shawn Michaels wrestled, so now all bets are off. Um, so don't. That's a little different. He's already wrestled in TNA. So uh, since Rick, his retirement, Rick, 
Rick, you know tell you watch. I know yes. you watch. We know, yes. Don't. Just fucking don't. Woo! Don't take a bump. Don't step in the ring. Don't don't even step on the stage. Just 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 don't. The stage is a lot lower now than it used to be. Still. Just don't. I prefer not to see Ric Flair die in the center of the ring. That's true. That's true. You guys are you he's guys okay trouble. over there? He's yeah. having trouble. <laughs> this thing is wanting to explode all over. Jeez, the why is it this floaty? Are we still doing phrasing? Phrasing. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there's some, some. He was on the. What is this? It was a conversation. Flair is popping up on network live specials. Guys, I got this. Uh, I got some. Here you go. What's it? What do you got over there? <laughs> oh, tissues. Yes, yeah, so you're going to you. clean yourself up a little bit. Thank yeah. you. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> what is happening? He's giving him tissues to clean up this beer. Welcome to the lowest rated show of the year. Gentlemen. Oh boy. Uh, oh, we've had lower. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, Anything with the Enzo hair. <sighs> Flair's the, talking about uh, he, he had difficulty doing anything when he still had that bag on his side that was attached to his in ta- intestines because it sat right on his waistline. But he's back doing 500 free squats. So Ric Flair yeah, open it over the cup. is insane. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Oh no, he's opening it up over the cup. Oh, okay. There you go. Hey, bro, your cup came in handy for once. There you go. All right. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. It's it might not be red solo, but uh, it's good enough. There you go. Good enough for Guinness World Records. Good enough for color lights. (laughs) The piss. The piss water. We gotta cover the logos. Oh shit! Cover the logos. Uh, turn around. We don't. It doesn't matter. Oh. I mean, oh, in that case, it'd be nice if they paid us. But oh, <laughs> we've also mentioned Guinness a lot. So. <laughs> All oh, right, so Ric Flair, please don't get in the ring. Please don't die. <laughs> <laughs> this was such a weird segment. <laughs> Um and speaking well, of what, some- did you, what did you think <laughs> we were going to say like oh boy he's been cleared Ric Flair versus Daniel Bryan no, 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 no. No, we're trying to talk about Ric Flair and then we have to open a beer really that was the part really a segment with Ric F- Flair and alcohol isn't okay this is that doesn't go together it's actually, actually the standard. very appropriate <laughs> like Batista spent a segment on Smackdown 1000 talking about Ric Flair's dick what yeah, I don't remember that. That happened. That happened. That happened. Um, where's Lunchbox for that one? Not wrestling. I was just oh, th- actually I was oh. just talking to Lunchbox yesterday, and we we're talking about his show comeback. So, yes. um, otherwise, you saw him um, get fired off of Monday Night Raw a couple weeks ago, but apparently Rhino is uh, retired after 23 years in the ring. No, he said he's not retiring. Oh, he's not retiring. No, he's just not on raw anymore he's still doing all the live events up through his, the rest of his contract. oh i see there's an update to this article that i've had linked for a while that says despite his comments during a commercial break last week uh rhino has sent in a video message to, w to clarify he is not in fact retiring <laughs> but would fulfill his remaining <laughs> WWE contractual <laughs> obligations <laughs> oh so oh, okay. rhino <laughs> is yep. completely not retiring oh um, I just want to point something out, and Mad Mike, uh, I, I like you, bro. You're funny. Do uh, you guys remember Brack from Space Ghost, Coast to Coast? Every yeah. once in a while, uh, Mad Mike goes into uh, the Brack voice when he's in a rant. <laughs> Do you guys notice that? <laughs> no, like, I, I pulled this picture up, and I looked at him like, yo, Mike's definitely Brack. <laughs> oh, Brack. Yeah. I was thinking the lizard guy, not that, not that guy. That no. guy had his own show for a while. Did he? Yep. Yeah. But he definitely has that going on, and I just start cracking up every time I heard his rant. I'm like, Brack, is that you? I'll accept that. <laughs> I need an advocate to call me Brack Lesnar. <laughs> oh, I'm your guy, man. I'm a good manager. <laughs> <laughs> he tells the referee what to do. <laughs> Somebody has to. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, Dojo Pro is on Facebook Watch now. They they have at least the first three episodes up now as of today. Uh, so if you have not checked it out on Prime, Amazon, or um, over on what was else was it on? It was on uh, Hulu or something, maybe. Not on one of those services. Uh, but you can watch it for free over on the Dojo Pro Facebook page. Again, a friend of the show, uh, Rob Johnston, who uh, serves as a, a com- uh, announcer on there, and I think a, a executive producer of some sort. If I recall, um, we talked with him uh, several, 
several months ago when it first came out on Amazon Prime. So go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, and, of course, uh, I won't spoil if you're not catching up on Ring of Honor, <laughs> who won the belt and, uh, and, uh, and, and fought for the TV championship. I don't know. The internet will tell you. Uh, also, there's some tattoo stuff this week, guys. What? <laughs> no, we don't need to talk about that. Oh, no, we're not that. talking about no, that No, come shit. on. No, no, no. Okay. no there, we're that's not that. newsworthy. No. That's not newsworthy. No. That was just an no. interesting thing. No. 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 Some moron made a terrible life choice, and no, it's not Booker. I'm wrong. What is the worst tattoo you've ever seen in wrestling? In wrestling? In wrestling. Um. Oh, God. Michael Cole. Wait, what's Michael and Cole's? Any of Michael Cole's tattoos. Wait, wait, I don't Michael know Cole about... Michael Cole has tattoos? Tell me about Michael Cole's tattoos. I don't... Do you, you got, all right, you guys have clearly blocked this out of your brain, so I almost don't want... This might have been you. during one of my long sabbaticals. Yep, uh, when Michael Cole started to wrestle. Really? Yeah, he has a lot of just terrible and awkward tattoos. Just... Does he have, like, just, the, the Lesnar tramp stamp? No, that no, one, that one's pretty bad. Smaller and worse, and poorly placed. I don't know. Lesnar's sable tramp stamp is pretty bad, like wow, right, wow. right above his butt. Wait, wait, seriously? Is this well, a thing? It, it doesn't say sta- yeah. sable, but I'm just, yeah, it's yeah. It's not like uh, when Undertaker had his ex-wife on his neck. It might be. Lesnar has terrible tattoos. But I would never tell him that to his face. Why? So I'm gonna go with Michael Cole. Because you would tell Michael Cole into his face for sure. And you don't think Absolutely. Michael Cole is not gonna punch you in the face? No. I think I think Michael Cole's a hard ass. I, I mean, mean that guy has been around. He's the rest a war of vet. He's a, he's a war correspondent. I get it. I think I could take him. <laughs> you think you could take him? We have a question from the chat room for Ronnie. Hmm? Oh. Uh, what what is the girl with an eye patch on your sleeve? Uh, that is not a girl. That is the governor from The Walking Dead. Oh. Yeah, I have Walking Dead sleeves. Who asked that question? Nice. That was Tina. Ever out in Seattle. Tina, eat your ham. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of tattoos. Uh, I've never noticed your tattoos. Wait, you usually have long sleeves when you come out there? Uh, yeah, I have. This is the comic sleeve, and then I have one character from the TV show. And then this is the other comic sleeve. And then I have uh, my dog passed away in uh, May. So I got a tattoo for him. And I got the Pittsburgh Colors up here, barbed wire. That was tattoo number two, regrets. Uh, and then I have... Uh, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and then I have the Green Power Ranger. That's a sweet... Is that like a chibi Green Ranger there? Yeah. That's awesome. Did you get that signed at Steel City Con this no, week? No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't want to spend 60 bucks to meet. Sixty dollars to meet that guy? Yeah, he was charging sixty. Holy yeah. crap! Jeez. Jesus, go to New York Comic Con. He charges less there. Lopan was charging less than that at Monster Palooza. <laughs> oh, I have Wait, my what? name on my. The arm dude too. who played Lopan in Big Trouble in Little China, he's oh. charging fifty dollars for autographs at Monster Palooza. That's ridiculous. Welcome. I know, but Green Ranger's worse. Yeah. I'd rather have Lopan on my arm than. He, he's a great guy, though. He's Jason David Frank's really nice. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that means he didn't get paid much to be there. He's a little weird. That's probably <laughs> well. Yeah, he's been a Power too. Ranger for like 30 years, man. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> he lives the Power Ranger life. He really does. Like, he, he's he's a little weird. I mean, he seems like a guy. Did, didn't he? No, he did. He did MMA for a while, right? Yeah. He never did anything wrestling. He never did a crossover. No. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Not yet. I'm still waiting for that Stephen Amell and uh, Green Ranger match. Right. It needs to happen. He wants to happen. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Green Arrow versus Green Ranger and all in two, all out. Let's do it. I'm all in. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll have news later, sooner or later about what the uh, all in new promotion is going to be that's supposedly happening. I know we were kind of speculating last week. Well, if you we guys have been watching uh, Being the Elite. I have YouTube. not been uh, caught up with that, no. Oh my God, it's amazing, guys. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, they have a ticking clock from when their alleged contracts ex- expire. Really? But really, it's like leading up to the announcement for the promotion that they're going to announce at the beginning of the That's year. That's all. Like, we've been hearing about how they've been kind of announced as, you may never see them again, like when they're doing their appearances and signings at, at uh, the live yeah. events and everything. So um, that's cool. All right, guys. Well, in the meantime, hey, I want to give a shout out to some cool friends of ours right up the street here. 
Um, and I, and uh, I know I was uh, I was made aware that I put the wrong thing in the ad, but our good friend supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I shouldn't even say anything because most of you guys listen on audio and don't see the graphic I made anyways. You don't see these wonderful, <laughs> sweet graphics <laughs> and Ronnie Stark's sweet tattoos Heck yes. of some girl from Walking Dead. Apparently, apparently it's a girl with an eye patch. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> our good friends right here in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, the East End and PNC Park home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check it out. Support our friends that are feeding our friends that come here in the studio uh, to do this uh, in the evening hours. Gets our energy. Gets a pepperoni-fueled energy up here. Thank you to our good friend, Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway, com, PGH underscore Slice. And again, our our guerrilla um, campaign, because we know you guys are all over the place. We know we have people in the Fancy. chat room from Kansas City, Los Angeles, Seattle areas. If you have a Broadway in your town, wherever you might be, take a picture of the street sign, send it to PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and let them know, hey, here's a Broadway. We'd love a Slice on it, too. Uh, to help with the global expansion with these guys. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Tina's saying, until Slice delivers by Boeing Jet, not impressed. Well, what you need to do, Tina, is get to New York City for WrestleMania by way of a layover in Pittsburgh, because I'm sure that's how that works, because we're completely not a hub uh, for anybody. Uh, and then you got to you swing, swing, swing in an Uber, maybe, maybe, maybe Mayhem Uber, Uber. Um, down to Carnegie, PA. Sword. Grab up some Sword. slice. What? Sword. Just bring her some slice if she rolls into the airport for a. This layover. is true too. We can arrange that. We can do a yeah. drive-by slicing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was a drive-by <laughs> fruiting. That sounds like Sid Vicious and Arn Anderson. <laughs> Go check them out, SlaysOnBroadway.com. Thanks a lot. We will be back with the big question right after this. Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, we got, of course, Mad Mike is with us from Poughkeepsie, New York. You haven't decorated yet. Are you decorating for, for Christmas, your your space up there? Uh, in in uh uh, uh mayhem mayhem east um well, no not yet okay that's for the next I, year. I, I i've been a little busy plus life has been taking control of things of so course been, of course I, i've had other things to i just about. put lights on my tree tonight not this tree behind me that the lights were already installed i'm talking about <laughs> but, uh, the actual but, tree um, over there May, mayhem studios b is properly decorated oh fantastic so. fantastic yeah also larry is with us in studio my basement is not decorated. Your basement is not decorated. No. You, you, you don't. Hanukkah's over, dude. Hanukkah is over. You're like you're like post holiday. Well, I got my beer. I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so so what happens with like? I know we get the weird week between between Christmas and and New Year's. Do you just get like weird off month? Well, no. Wait, what? Between Christmas and New Year's? Yeah. I'll be working during between Christmas and New Year's. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. You your 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 house at at is decorated with care. Ugh, the cat at the cat at. <laughs> Somebody has a new AT AT Walker <laughs> that came home from the con. <laughs> did you buy one? I did not. No 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 no. No, no. <laughs> no the lady brought it home and, yes. and it was eating with us at Eaton Park the other night. Yes. Anyways, that was something. Also, I Ronnie, really, I really hope she puts a leash on it. It's been neutered. It's been neutered. All the guns have been taken off it. <laughs> neutered and spayed. <laughs> Remember, kids, neutered and spay your ass. Well, it's Ronnie. okay if it has guns on it as long as it shoots blanks. Nope. Hi oh <laughs> phrasing. Ronnie Starks, MT Osha with us. And, Hi everyone. And Hi. his um illicitly acquired Guinness World Cup. Yep, it's right here. Uh Battle Royal Maybe trophy. <laughs> that I should have won. Yeah. That you should have won. <laughs> You wouldn't have forgot it. Well, you got it anyways. I so. mean, he might not get it back. He might not. I was actually thinking about getting a bigger trophy and putting the real Guinness Book of World Records holder on it and just be like, <laughs> hey, man, this is the real trophy. <laughs> like, I don't want to torture him. I torture him enough. Oh, man. Well, it is time for the big question. And uh, I want to do something in theme because uh, Ronnie Starks is with us. And... and as part of what happens at wrestling shows, he issues violations, right? And he got the violations with you. He's got it. There you go. He's got the pad. He's got the violations. 
We should just like put those on a bunch of cars along the street here. Oh my after god, the I show. will. Do you want me to? <laughs> All right, yeah. Will you take pictures of it too? <laughs> yeah. All right, it's totally going down. All right, <laughs> we put it on the taco stand yeah. <laughs> across the street. <laughs> I could do a promo in front of the taco stand and throw a violation. On <laughs> These are good ideas. Um, but anyways, uh, Mad Mike, and, and uh, yeah, this was your idea. Yeah. Um, so, so because, because we do have some of the issues, violations, um, I, I figure we could look at the pantheon of pro wrestling and you find some people who are very, very smartly dressed. Mm -hmm. That's not, th those people aren't fun to talk about. No, no, no. You're not I want to know the big question this week is which wrestler has been the biggest violator of fashion? In the history of pro wrestling. And I, of course, when you look at the four of us, if you're on video, we know fashion, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Style yes. and profile. Right now, Mike is the only one wearing buttons. Because I came from work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Who's the biggest fa fashion violators out there? I know we already have a bunch in the chat room going. <coughs> hmm. You know what? Triple I, I, H. I'm gonna say Triple H. Triple why Triple H? Because I'm tired of seeing that leather jacket <laughs> and the jean jacket and the leather that's jacket. Fair. He, he he does wear a leather jacket jean jacket combo. That's that's not Yep. That's not that wasn't even good in two thousand two. That wasn't mm. good in ninety eight. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, he's he's living that like like this is what I would have worn listening to Motorhead yep. in their prime. Yeah. I remember the day when I went to see Motorhead. That's <laughs> Triple H talking like, well, let's see Motorhead he's, a he's, times. he's like wearing the clothes that he wears to go see concerts that he used to w go see when he was younger. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> like seems mo right. Like Motorhead. Okay. Like Triple H now going to a Motorhead concert. I bet he would wear that jacket. Oof. Jeez. Uh, uh, what about you, Mike? Oh, man. They're... Some of the ones I thought of have been mentioned in the chat room, so I will not seal those answers. Mm, but um, some good ones, I think you would have said. If you look, I'm going to say mid-90s WWF. There's a lot of poor potential there. I think ultimately I'm going to go with Bastion Booger. Wow. Ultimately. Bastion like, Booger. Remind oh, yeah. us of Bastion Booger. Um, a lot of straps. A lot of straps, a lot of body hair, a lot of food in said straps and said body hair. He would come um, out like eating a turkey leg or something. I'm wasn't pretty he? sure he was wearing more straps than he had teeth. That's Man. not uh, that, that's not necessarily an accurate count, but it's close enough where I could eyeball it. I, you know what? Speaking of straps. Like, which yeah, it was kind of like a demolition kind of straps kind of thing, right? Demolition is definitely questionable, but um, um, I, I don't know what. I, whenever time we go back and see how demolition is one of my favorite tag teams, and somebody else said that recently too. I think it was Nick last week, and we're just like, what were we thinking, and what did our parents were think were wrong with us when we thought demolition was our favorite tag team? <laughs> we're in obvious dominatrix kind of what the hell is that, right? Um, but I'm going to go with... Especially when you were saying, here comes the axe, here comes the smash. Right, right. There was a lot of uh, innuendo in that. Uh, but hey, when you go back and watch like 80s WWF, there's a lot more innuendo than you remember. Um, I, I, I have to go with, and I'm going to steal mine from 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff because they were watching uh, Starcade. 96 and Jeff Jarrett I think was just coming in Ooh. and at the Ooh. time so he wasn't doing the full on double J thing and I always wondered this too because he had like like he wore like a collar and these like like not straps or something like several of them like down the front of him I did not I never understood that and it was always really weird to me mm -hmm. but I mean not that he's done a lot of great fashion in his 90s era career right since we're talking about that uh this topic um i'd like to point out that nakamura was dressed like one of the charlie's angels today really yep had a blue jumpsuit and 
He's been Nakamura has impeccable fashion. Yeah, that is true. He has impeccable fashion sense. And like this blue suit that he's been wearing since um since Survivor Series just looks comfortable. Mm-hmm. Nakamura, we may as well call him Shinsuke Deep V Nakamura. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Wow, Ronnie, what who's your violation? Uh you guys remember Mantar? <laughs> First of all, how is that guy going to wrestle with that giant freak? Did he ever take that thing off? If he, the, I think it was an issue when he tried yeah, he, getting he in the ring. Yeah, he took the head off. Yeah. He yeah. took the head off, and it was not much more pleasant. No. <laughs> no, a lot of makeup. Thing on. <laughs> a lot of makeup. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that always pops in my head every time. Yeah, I'm like, Man. Rep- Reptar? Yeah. The 90s were yeah. rough. Like, yeah, like right. I don't, I don't want to criticize dudes who are products of their generation. Because, like, you can go with the dynamic dudes. Not a good look, but it was the 80s. So, you know. No, I think the dynamic dudes were in the 90s. The dynamic dudes were in the 90s? I thought so. Okay, but it was the South. So the 90s hadn't come to the South yet. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. That was cutting edge. (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah, it's like Canada. Okay. It's like Canada. And Canada just turned 2008. So That's why Nickelback's still popular there. Exactly. That was how you remind me. Um, how dare you? No. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, oh, God. Ronnie, Ronnie, issue it. Uh, issue it for the Nickelback. Oh, my God. I hate Nickelback. There, there's nothing in this world. I, I can't even hit. You know what the best part about Nickelback is? Hmm. When their songs fucking end. You know, maybe they should have never even happened. <laughs> Which uh, is a funny thing about Nickelback. Did you guys see the latest trailer for Once Upon a Deadpool? Yeah. What if him and yep. Fred Savage yep. saying, yep. this is how you remind me. And the fact that I'm singing it right now, I want to give myself a goddamn violation. <laughs> <laughs> See this, everybody? I'm giving myself Are you violation. violating yourself? You're, he's violating himself. Oh, no. Oh, it's not the first time someone's violated themselves on this show. This is true. <laughs> I mean, you think I got Boop. violated enough in the basement the other day. You know, I, uh, I'm getting violated today. Not not Larry's basement. Not my basement. basement. Scare, yeah, Larry, not my basement. The scare house Larry, basement. To be fair, you're not we can't really talk <laughs> ill of Nickelback on this show. <laughs> they did provide the theme song for Raw for years. Yeah, but not my favorite. That was Union Underground. Uh, anyways, um, uh, from the chat room, Alex Carr says Orlando Jordan and TNA. I think Mike, you were very uh, <laughs> memorable of uh, that. That that was that was more than just a fashion violation. I believe that was a civil civil liberties violation. You know the spiritual success. Yeah, the spiritual successor to that. And I just posted a video of him with uh, Jesse Bell Smothers up on uh, the indie. Uh, actually, I think it's over on the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance Facebook. Uh, Sizzlin Stan Styles. Have you seen this guy with his rip cream lately? Um, he had a great match. Um, I, I didn't he have an interesting interaction with friend of the show Lola. Uh yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. But, you know, slightly troubling. Also, also when seems, he gives seems slightly more consensual though, so I'll allow it. Um, some of the videos not so much. Also, when he gives whipped cream <laughs> to eight year olds at ringside, that gets real weird. Ooh, um, that's no, that's that's, that's, that's that. not good. That's not. Uh, that's hey, they. It's, it's all right. All right, hold on. It's I, different. I'm, it's a yeah. Hey, remember how we talked about in the South, like <laughs> things are not at the same period. Sorg, I love issue. it, but well, West Newton, man. No, even I want an issue ago. edict for 2019. Well, you talk about that, but uh, Lord Zoltan would give out beads. Him and uh, what the hell is his tag team? Oh, um, Sane. Yeah, Justin just, Sane. Justin Sane. They come out to big butts. Yeah, and they would hand out beads to kids. Yeah, so, they would. They would come out and um, dance the entirety of "I Like Big Butts." Yeah, that's fine. Yes. That's well, fine. at least it's not whipped cream, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, is he putting whipped cream in kids' mouths? Or? Yes. Guys, yes. it's 2019. He's giving don't give eight year olds whippets. No, 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 no. That's one thing you don't whip real good. No. Uh, was that, too much? that was a little much. Oh. Sorry about that. All right, Sorry. moving on, moving on. Uh, we got a what lot else of does the chat room say, sir? Shane says Berserker. Oh, uh, Berserker was fine. Uh, Dan says J Flash violation for two small spanks. <laughs> Dude needs to cover up his uh, his junk. Mm. Akeem, the uh, African dream from Tina. 
Again, that I think that's another civil liberty. That's, like, that's a different kind of violation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Tina says gold dust when he was managing Luna. That's what I was thinking they, too. Oh, that that's was, what I was thinking of. Yeah. The artist formerly known as gold dust. The artist yeah. formerly known as gold dust. Undertaker wore a pair of snakeskin pants on pay per view in late 2000. <laughs> they were hideous and never seen again. <laughs> Mike? That is so specific and I love it. That is so specific. That was Matt Carlin's. Matt, you pulled that one right out of the smoother. Did you find out? It was so specific. Let's see. Fashion violation for D. I want to say that was Judgment Day 2001. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm right about that. I want to go look up. Snake. I wonder, is it, can I search for snake pants on <laughs> the network? Oh, I wouldn't do that. No, probably not. Um, Hold on, I got this. Not yet. Not yet. For maybe soon. Maybe you might soon. be able to. I hear. I hear soon. There's something that might be changing. Um, fashion violation for David Marbell. Uh, <laughs> let's see what you think. Uh, <laughs> Podner says Ronda Rousey's makeup. It is questionable. Listen. I don't understand women's makeup, but I don't think that's it. Uh, so, oh no, nothing Although, about Ronda Rousey screams fashion. Does I have to look at a picture again? But in my head, is there a correlation between her makeup and Mantar's makeup? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that episode. Of, Are you uh, saying that Mantar was really Ronda Rousey all this time? Maybe, Daddy. Do you guys watch uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Uh, not, not lately, but I have. Uh, there was an episode where it was uh, Dayman and Nightman, and yes. she had the Nightman. She, she she was only in it for the uh, the shocks. The shocks. Yeah, she was uh, the gasps. She was only in it for the gasps. Like that's what he would say. <laughs> we got Max Moon. Um, when Becky gets pissed and she starts to strut around like Stone Cold. Hey, hey. Well, I don't know about no that one. one. Ever, no one should ever talk ill of the man. Yeah. Um, let's see. Max Moon, early Briscoes. Early Briscoes. What was early Briscoes like? I'm on it. I'm on it. Early Briscoes. I don't remember those. Oh, I think you. Well, the Briscoes have never really had fashion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Kevin Nash is I don't Oz. think we have to classify early or current Briscoes. Matt says jean vest over leather jacket equals ham. Thumbs okay. up. I was Sorg, I was really close. It was Survivor Series 2001. 2000. 2000. Okay. Yeah, we, we have close. we have some oh geez. Oh geez. I'm just gonna hold this up to the camera since I have it on the phone. But They're looking uh, at his phone. It, 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 is, it is some movement. It is a full motion gif of this action happening. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Sorg, I, jeez. I can't see it. Oh, I'll, I'll put I it don't. up for you too. There you go. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. yeah, yeah. There it is. I'm in American snake pants. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! This I can't stop watching it. Looks like it's a wedgie. Why is he? They why did they post that three times? Why did you think that was a good? <laughs> wait, idea? wait, wait. Okay, this is according to threemanbooth.com. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, denim vest wrestled in gold snakeskin pants. There's periods after each of those words. Rumor has it that those were Godfather's pants, but we don't think that's true. Undertaker's too comfortable in those gold snakeskin pants. <laughs> I think we just got a glimpse into Mark Calloway. <laughs> the Undertaker that's, what I, that's what I think. The Undertaker could have won the WWE Championship that night, but Kurt Angle took advantage by using a little twin magic and leverage from Undertaker's gold snakeskin pants. <laughs> <laughs> he wrestled in this. Yeah. Jeez. I think that I think that also may have been the match with Eric Angle. Yeah, I think that that's what I'm thinking. Um also is is Eric the one that killed his wife? No. It was no. a different one. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, to also Bat Taker. Um, honorable mention from this website. He's got bat wings and he like floats in on a on a hook. Uh, oh no, there is nothing wrong with Batman Undertaker. Uh, it's I need to find because this if too. you can be Batman, you be Batman. That is true. First of all, WWE released a elite figure in, in him in the Batman costume. Really? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was on that uh, the Zack Ryder. Uh, Figure it out episode. Where you Scratch that it. itch. <laughs> he Jeez. spent like three hundred bucks on that freaking figure. Jeez, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any other anything else. Uh, I don't know. 
of uh, let's see, Vinny Vegas, Kevin Nash's Oz back in WCW. Kevin Nash has always been problematic fashion wise. Yeah, yeah. Vinny Vegas, Oz. Yokozuna, uh, really? No, Yokozuna, that's traditional sumo attire. Mm-hmm. He's Samoan. That's traditional sumo attire. That's <laughs> listen, he's Samoan. Listen, there's a lot of people that are Russians that were like not Russian. So we can get away with a Samoan Japanese man ish. I don't know. I couldn't tell when I was twelve. Okay, how about how about uh, Sergeant Slaughter? <laughs> what about him? He's during just... the uh, when he uh, defected? When he defected? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it, again, that's a civil liberties violation. Not really fashion. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's All true right. too. That's true too. Bo- All right, boogeyman. The boogeyman. I love. The uh, there's a lot of violations. Oh, there. oh, actually, I have another one. DX Tory. Oh, I don't remember she that. never like until she hooked up with X Fox. Before then, ooh, I don't know who dressed her, but they needed to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> They're now writing for Raw. Oh, probably, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't uh, shock me. Well, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, a few weeks ago, Joey Janela's LA Confidential saw some insane wrestling action, but not without some casualties. <laughs> Our uh, Wham fan, their Wham fan brother Marco Stunt was injured in a match and had uh, has had surgery to repair repair a broken leg. Uh, he looks to make a full recovery, but seeing as they both love and share a love uh, for uh, Nickelodeon crossovers, uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to help 100% of all proceeds from their merch at One Maneuver and o- shop.occupyprowrestling.com will go to their buddy Marco now through the end of January. Please go check them out again. Look for the uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling store at whatamaneuver.net and, or um, shop.occupyprowrestling.com. And uh, a shout out to these guys, some great designs. I know we kind of advertise as design services over on the other podcasts, but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. Again, Nickelodeon kind of based stuff. Legend of the Lucha Temple was featured on uh, Lucha Underground uh, a season or two back. Um, a lot of if, if you wear those shirts, you definitely will not be a victim of a fashion violation. No, you will not. There's a legit so. T-shirt that says Legends of the Lucha Temple. Yeah, so right shut there. up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll go get it. And you're going to help out Marco Stun in the process too over at OneManeuver.net. Uh, and again, we well, yeah we featured it. we were in the front row on the side of uh, <laughs> Lucha Underground, and uh, he got to feature that there on the show back in season three. So oh, that's great. Go check it out. Um, so, uh, Ronnie, uh, we, uh, <laughs> so how's it going, Ronnie? Good, good. Well, first of all, I mean, you've got a lot of going on. The empty OSHA is all over the place. Mm-hmm. You, you've acquired your, your rightful trophy. It's never leaving my side. You're never leaving your side. <laughs> <laughs> but I know we challenged you last week to go to the basement. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this has nothing to do with wrestling, but no. I, I I get the message that says, "Listen, man, I got your buddy called. I can't remember which one of us told you to get violated in the basement well, this year." Well, um, I think it was. Did you say something? Were you on here last week? I was. You said something like, "What is it to go in the basement if he wants to get violated?" You did I? Say that? Yeah, I might have. I don't recall. And then I was just like, "Challenge accepted." And the thing is, like, I've been in the basement every year since it opened, so I'm like, I'm like, all right, but this is the first time I went in the basement by myself. So I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine, you know, because I know what to expect. But, uh, God, I love this guy. I always, I always thought it'd be weird to go in there by yourself. It wasn't. Actually, from what I understand, the actors actually like it better if you go in by yourself. Because usually, uh, from what the girl was telling me at the main main door was, they sent two people in and they sent one person in. So they like, split it up. But I guess uh, they like it that way because it's more in- intimate. Mm-hmm. So, which is really nice. Yeah, because I know that when I go in, when I went in, like they they would send me away to mm-hmm. go do something else, mm-hmm. and the other person continues whatever sequence while I'm like kind of getting a head start on the next one. I guess we going through that that main that back was, hallway. He went through the one that was non-linear. Okay, it was like two years ago. They yeah. they had a oh, non, really? a non-linear path, so people didn't do the same thing. Show. Oh. So every, everybody had like a group of two would go through, and the person you were with saw stuff that was completely different from what you did. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It, Interesting. It's, it gets better and better every year. And uh, like I, I will literally put Scarehouse over every day of the week. I, I love that place. <laughs> and uh, I, I really do want to work there next year. So put in a good word for me. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we can do. We might, we you might you did people. give me one of your victory beers. so <laughs> we're, fr- we're friends now, man. Yep. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, I accepted the challenge. I had a great time. Uh, the Christmas, everything, everything was great. Uh, I loved the end when I saw a little Krampus. Saw the the Jack in the Box from Krampus. Mm-hmm. I love the Jack in the Box from Krampus. That's my favorite scene in any ridiculous horror movie ever. When the uh, when the little girl gets eaten by the uh, Jack in the Box, it's great. So I popped for that. I actually stood there and said, "Open that back up. I want to see it again." <laughs> and like the actor's just like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that was always interesting for me because I, I I saw the Krampus like set up, mm-hmm. what they, and I I never saw the movie until like a year later, but you know well, it was cool to be like oh that's the like because they have all the movie props and everything mm-hmm. in there so what what is the what is the last room is that pretty much supposed to be hell yeah okay yep right. what well, yeah they just for this last week they did basically they turned it into like Kramp- Krampus's like layer okay mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. really badass. Um, yeah, because we were talking about Scarehouse had a Christmas edition, so um, I kind of timed anything, it. Like, was there anything uh, that could be related to the movie starring Bill Goldberg, Santa Slay? No, there wasn't. <laughs> there, uh, no, there was nothing. There, there That's was, a shame. I sat on an evil Santa Claus's lap, and that was awkwardly amazing. So, um, I got to be an actor, and I was a bush. And you scared the shit out of me. I scared the shit out of Starks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I was I'm sad I didn't recognize you, but I couldn't see much through the suit <laughs> other was, than figures. You came out of the corner, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And I jumped really high, and then I started busting out laughing. I'm like, "Oh, it's just a tree," <laughs> but still, you got the job done. Yeah, so. yeah. I figured the crouching, and and most people were kind of like shocked that a six foot four bush was coming at him. <laughs> uh, so, but there, 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 people were well. One people called me Chewbacca for an hour. That's great. And uh, we're just like, oh, cool, a ghillie suit. I was like, I know, like, I never even knew that's the name of this until like that day. <laughs> so, but it was a lot of blast. It, it was a blast as always. Um, so I, I guess we we have you on here. You do have a show this weekend. Uh, two actually, two shows this weekend. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the indie scene here in the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh area, and of course, a lot of this stuff is being seen on uh, uh, publicly because of stuff going on. <laughs> wow, as if her ears were burning. Somebody from the scare house top pops in the chat room. Dutters is on right now. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but uh, but no, there's there's a big show going on down in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get cameras down to it, but it's going to be a pretty big deal going on there with Mick Foley uh, as part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Nailer Mania. Nailer Mania. We uh, Dan and Dustin are defending the tag titles against Keith Hot and. Uh, Tony Jones, for the, for the last time, this is their for the last time, and hopefully they have match. hopefully they have a team name. Uh, you know what? I created Hot Ice because yes. it's Rookie of the Year. I, did anybody else pop for that when they saw it? Hot Ice, it's the best of both worlds. Like that's money. It's awful. And they're, they're how dare you, sir? <laughs> <It's awful>. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And they're like, we're not doing that. I'm like, well, you guys suck. Like, I don't know why the, Bearcat the isn't the obvious thing and like right off the bat. It, yeah. You know. And then some, some, somebody said Hot Johnson. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. His name is Keith Hot. So. Oh, that was his girlfriend said, uh, Tony's girlfriend said Hot, Hot Johnson. And I was like, I don't know if we're allowed to say that or not. <laughs> but, uh, Where's this promotion? Where's this promotion on the PG scale? <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I it, think they're, 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 oh, they're, not, they're not whipped creaming eight year olds. So, oh, well, yeah. that's, thank God for that. Yeah. I only scream I'm going to violate people on the show. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the line. That's the line. And sometimes some but awkward safe, cultural safe, ref- safely, oh, yeah. Safely, though. Sometimes. Safe, safely. <laughs> yeah, safely. Safely. Sometimes some awkward <laughs> cultural references from the show, from the audience. But other than that. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. we are in West Virginia. So, but yeah. Nailer Mania. Uh, I, apparently, it's a 515 bell time. Mm-hmm. And then we are going from Nailer Mania up to... Uh, McKeesport for uh, Fight Society. Fight Society. I, I filmed my first Fight Society last month. Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. was a part of that. Mm-hmm. I know Bill Collier is coming back for this one, mm-hmm. another big name. And I think he's had some development time with WWE, if I recall. Uh, Bill Collier? Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, big dude. Usually really good matches whenever I see him. Great guy, um, too. I've known mm-hmm. him for uh, 12 years. So, you've been doing the MTO shit thing for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I know I've I've seen a lot of it. I I, I I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks it's hilarious, but <laughs> it's just uh, but you guys do some really interesting things with this. What is the weirdest thing MT OSHA has done? If you guys don't know, like if you guys are you come out in the hard hat and the safety vest if you're seeing the video here like this, and and you issue violations. There are safe zones. Um, <laughs> 
There, it, it's some interesting shenanigans going on out there. Well, then we also have that that spray hose where we spray yeah, it looks like tree water into somebody's face. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you're Oops. you're. You're, 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 um, um, what disinfecting the crowd, I think yeah. you say when you come out. It looks like the arrogance thing. It, it, it's great because we have so many more ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Dan has so many more ideas because this is Dan's baby. Mm -hmm. You know, Dan's like, hey, what if we became OSHA? That's a Dan sandwich, oh, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this was all him. He told Kevin first and told me. And he's like, dude, you need to, this is what you got to wear. And I'm like, all right. So I bought all this shit. We tried it. <laughs> We tried it at the uh, the show after the anniversary show, and everybody, when I got to that get up, everybody's like, what the fuck? Like, legit, everybody's like, what, what the heck are you doing? Because I'm so used to uh, not, I'm my gimmick is me, mm -hmm. but just like up here, all right? So, uh, but like, this is a completely different beast for me doing something like this. This is legit a gimmick, and it's working for mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly think this really... Uh, you know, recreated us as, you know, characters. And I think it's going to take off. Mm -hmm. It's already taken off and we've only been doing it for six months now. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, this is amazing. I think going into 2019, I think we're going to get a lot more work. And going back, yeah. going back to like, so what is the kind of the weirdest thing that you guys have done okay. so far? Well, <laughs> can I tell you something that isn't uh, non OSHA related? The weirdest okay. thing Dan and I have ever done. Uh, Dan's going to pop for this because I think he knows what's coming. Uh, let me tell you a little story about the Trojan Elbow. <laughs> um, we worked this show, and we didn't know, but it was a church rec hall. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, we wanted to mess with our uh, friend Nick Mira. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Dan brought a condom to the show, and at the time I was carrying a lunchbox. So I had the condom in a lunchbox, and Dan's like, all right, when I call for the people's elbow, you know, rip the condom open, throw it to me, I'll stretch it out, and I'll throw it on top of Nick Mira, and I'll give him the Trojan elbow. And we had no idea this was a church show, and yeah, we got a lot of heat for that. But <laughs> it, it is one of the funniest things we've ever done, and one of the most awkward things we've ever done. So, but as far as OSHA is concerned, we haven't really done anything over the top yet mm -hmm. but there's always time and uh it's only gonna get better from here trust me <laughs> there has been a bounce house oh the bounce house is great i do love them i think that's never coming back i think that happened <laughs> one show and they yelled at us because we all got on it and like i'm like 250 pounds dan's like buck 90 mm. and kevin's like 200 it's, so it's meant for kids that are like 50 to 95. And it was oh, not yeah. a large one. It was yeah. not a very large yeah. one. It was enough to get them in there, and that was about it. Yeah, but it yeah. started deflating as soon as we got in there. <laughs> and I think Rick's wife was just like, it's deflating. You guys need to get out of there. And we're just like, yay, we're in a bounce house. Hooray, we won. And we're like just being idiots about it. Awesome. Uh, Dan saying huge pop out there, too. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, no, it's been a lot of fun to kind of see this thing develop over the last couple of months. And, of course, you know, over on Black Diamond and Fight Society uh, is mostly where you guys have been doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So, go check that out. Um, also, in the indies this weekend, I know this is kind of becoming the indie segment of the show lately. Um, but there is some, like, stuff that's made national news. Um, I don't know if you guys saw what IWC did, did this past weekend. Um <laughs> Because, holy crap, we had to figure out how to film it, and I wasn't even at that show. But, uh, uh, so, so IWC did, there was a three stages of hell match. And there was, you know, first of all was, you know, a singles match. Second fall was, like, a hardcore match. And then they had the third fall where they rose a curtain, revealed a second ring <laughs> with a cage. To which everybody just gathered around. Like you ever see like the the, the UK shows where yeah. it's just like the it crowd. It's Thunderdome. Is, it, it it did turn into Thunderdome, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, to the point where they did they did something where, um, uh, Wardlow threw Jack Pollock into the ring, and threw the ring. Like legit mm. over the fucking. No 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 no, 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 no. Like, like into the mat and the mat collapsed. Okay, I was gonna say he's like on the, he's like on the top turnbuckle. Uh, you remember Mick Foley fell off the um, Hell in a Cell the second time on purpose? Yeah. Like and and they like actually had him like like cushion into the the ring yeah. with that one with Triple H. Yeah. Like it was, it, it was sort of like that, but not as pretty. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, indie wrestling, right? And apparently that got picked up by the Sun UK. 
this week. Nice. Uh, well, today, I guess. Um, last night, I don't know how UK's time works. Um, so interesting that there's, a, you know, again, some national attention there. And, of course, you know, David Arquette, a part of that. Um, as I like to say, um, when, you're, when we're asking you guys to go pick up uh, Winner Takes All uh, from IWC, see the last show where David Arquette was pretty. Before he got all before he gave on cool. Nick Gage the next week. I'll so. tell you, oh, I can't, man, that was that was something. That was interesting. Um, uh, he got he got pretty uh pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did he earn a violation? Uh, well, I think Nick Gage got a violation because <laughs> <laughs> he almost murdered. I mean, he almost killed him. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, down the road, we had a fans bring the weapon match, and I have to tell you guys about this experience. Um, of course, this is a promotion we talked about last week where Matt Carlin's was having his first ringside um, experience with us at RWA. This is the same promotion where um, eight-year-olds get creamed. Um, and, and they started throwing uh, chairs into the ring, the fans, uh, mm-hmm. during this, this match that, that had suddenly become a hardcore match. Um, this month, it was fans bring the weapon, and you're talking about Terror Dome. Um, so usually i mean there was a fans bring the weapon match at, at black diamond a couple months ago ronnie you remember that yeah you remember what they did with the weapons like they collected them at the beginning of the night right yeah yeah that's like you know you, you get to look at them you get the plan you get to mm-hmm. you know see what you're dealing with check out the, the items that wasn't the situation this right? is not the situation Ugh. in this situation it's fans bring the weapon and as he's announcing it you see the entire crowd raise their weapon implement over their heads in the crowd. That sounds like the beginning of Mad Max. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so during the course of this match, you are grabbing like rings and pumpkin pies and sticks and 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 other things um, from the crowd. It's kind of like in like a, a, a 2000s, or actually probably more recent even, you know, like in a wrestling game where you just like randomly get weapons like from the crowd yeah. for some like reason? A, like a giant copy of the book of the Rock's autobiography, The Rock Says. What? Was that that was in No Mercy. Oh, that was in No Mercy. I, I would love if that was one of the items. So yeah, it's literally like you're, you're just taking things from the audience members and using them. It's a terrible idea. As a, well, well, at one point, and I made a gif of this, um, there was a point where Ryan Edmonds picked up a crutch. Little did he know, somebody had meticulously super glued tacks along the line on one side of the crutch. Oh, no. And he grabbed it, and his hand was started bleeding from it. So, and there were many things. Somebody took... Somebody took um, these um the, you know the spikes that hold the, the the roof together when you're doing roofing yeah yeah somebody took like a bunch of those and put them on a board again like g raver is a hardcore guy right yeah like, he probably he's, looked he's at that it was death like, matches no, fuck no. <laughs> yeah i mean this is like so everybody brought in th- implements of death match the, the creativity it turned into we were saying it turned into like a redneck science fair um, <laughs> it was scary what they brought out there and what they created, and, and like 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 issues oh of super glue. There was a pinata, and and pinata. Were there tacks in the pinata? The, they did not break That's the pinata. There was been. it was full of tacks and glitter. They did not use it in the match because <laughs> oh, they did shit. not know what was in it. <laughs> Nobody told them. I mean, they made Who's a good choice not using it. I mean, <laughs> what color glitter? So, I don't know. Right, I don't right, know. Hold on, hold on. Can we make that the new Lucha House rules? <laughs> yes. A pinata well, party? Like, I, want, I want the fourth member of Lucha House party to be Abyss. And his pinata <laughs> is full of thumbtacks and glitter. Well, yeah, they, 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 he picked up the pinata, and there's some great pictures on, on the indie wrestling um, uh, page and, and Instagram of, of G Raver holding this colorful pinata that's like a donkey. Um, and to into which point I, uh, the crowd started chanting Jerry. I'm <laughs> guessing that was his name. But now there is an uh, argument between G Raver, Stan Styles, and several fans over what the name of the pinata was on Twitter <laughs> since Saturday night. That is still going on to this day on Tuesday night. Um, so yeah, it, it was. Either way, indie wrestling was really interesting this weekend. <laughs> Not to mention whatever the hell is going to happen at Fight Society and 2PW. And Alex asked geez. if uh, anyone brought any light tubes. No light. 
No, there, what? No, amazingly, no. There was a light tube at uh, Black Diamond. Somebody brought a light tube. Really? Somebody brought a thing of tax. You're allowed to. Yeah, yeah. They, which nobody used. I noticed. I mean, they dumped it. They dumped it. Did you see uh, Morgan? She actually, she actually rolled into it by accident, and she busted herself open. She came back and. She's like, I got all these tacks in my hands. I'm like, you gotta be more careful. You don't know where those are been, man. Like, yeah, that's scary taking tax from like, yeah, somebody Fuck else. That dude. you don't know what's happened. I remember, man. I remember back in the day, like when we did backyard wrestling. Somebody came up to me. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these tacks out there, right? And I, he showed me them, and one was like this long. And I'm like, and kind of rusty. And I'm like, that's a nail. No, you're not doing that. <laughs> you're not doing that at all. It's like, oh. No, that's not okay. I don't think you understand how this is supposed to work. <laughs> so. I got I got slammed on tax before. That was, uh, that was awful. Time? It's not a good day. No, not really. I had to uh, go to the hospital. <laughs> really? I had uh, well, I, I bumped onto my side, so I had tax all in my arm and my shoulder down my side. I had a tax stuck in my knee. Like I, I didn't get that shit taken out. <laughs> It's a little sideways, but here's a here's a little picture. Of, oh, there it is. There's a uh, G Raver with his uh, oh. his friend. It's gonna, it's gonna pop up on there. <laughs> You'll see it up there in a second. Maybe, uh, maybe this is a big question, but if we all brought a weapon to a fans bring the weapon match, what would we bring? That sounds like homework. For I'd, next I'd week. bring a pinata full of tacks and glitter, <laughs> <laughs> and we could buy it from like across the street here, and it has the Smurfs on it. Um, yeah, that's something we can do. I would uh, I would definitely bring a, a barbed wire baseball bat. Mm-hmm. Tar Lucille. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would I would get a lead pipe <laughs> and put it inside my stuffed sky to hottie worm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And fill it full of Roman candles. <laughs> oh, somebody's gonna die. There was there was another thing that they did where they, it was um the snap you know the snaps like the throw down snap kind of yeah. things you get at firework mm-hmm. time. Oh, um, well, they were like the bigger ones. I don't know what they're called, but they, they taped those. I think I told you about this, Larry. They taped them in between two boards <laughs> and threw, a, threw one guy through them. Um, across, it was like laid across two, it did two chairs. It did nothing. It, it, huh. it, I, it does exactly what you would think it would do. I, Make a little pop you know what as you're would be crashing through a very loud board. Right, right, right. <laughs> did nothing. If you, could, if you could somehow make a Pop Rocks and Coke Molotov cocktail, yeah, why not? What is? <laughs> Are you trying to catch these venues on fire? Do you know how like? Well, I'm not saying you, you know how flammable that gymnasium I'm, probably is. I'm not saying you actually lay it on fire because of pop rocks and coke. You don't have. Sorg, to. you need to put a disclaimer on it this just episode. Explodes. Are they are they still in the same building? Yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the building. Yeah, that building. Standing. That building would go up in flames. I right? know, right? I was really worried when Sean Phoenix did a match there. He used the fire and he's he's great. Well, I like Sean. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he had a little, a little bit of a comeback at IWC this past weekend. Not a match, but he made an appearance. Nice. Caught his face on fire. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> he did a little bit, I guess. What? Yeah, yeah. Sean, Sean, bro. man, he's still trying to get heat, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Literally, mm. bro, stop killing yourself, please. Oh, um, Alex is apparently talking about uh, if I bring tax, I, I go to the store 30 minutes before the show. Yeah, not everybody. You don't know the, if that's what the fans did, though. We were like, here's tax, and here they are, new in packaging. No, they, you you know they planned that. Oh, that yeah. was like their – they spent the like past three weeks – Planning their weapons, collecting taxes, <laughs> <It's>, yeah, <laughs> like, collecting tax from the from the uh, the message board in the back of sheets. It's like putting it's like <laughs> putting just... your posters together before you go to RAW. Tax soaked in acid. <laughs> we got, it's fine, guys. Yeah. We got this. Nope. We're, we're gonna, gonna go. We're gonna just, go batter, just batteries and tax. I would bring a board with cans cut in half and wrap it in barbed wire. That's Holy shit! Wow, Is Alex. It, no, d- Alex, Alex, you need to come to RWA next time. There's a fan bring the weapons match. Holy Al- shit! Al- Alex is secretly a serial killer. Jeez, are you going to those? Are you going to those uh, death match shows that I went to Sun City when I was out there? <laughs> Jeez, this guy like cutting his forehead open in front of ten people. It was it well, was I've amazing. Been, I've been to one of those. Yeah, I worked one of those. You worked one of those. Yeah, it's uh, it was it was something. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to clean up that VFW afterwards. <laughs> uh, somebody please find me other wrestling when I go to California this week. Hey, I'm I don't think I'm too far from Bakersfield, Alex. When I go out there um, in May, so we might have to do something. 
All right, enough of that. If you guys want to check out some of the stuff we're talking about, you can check out IndieWrestling.us, VODs for Fight Society. Now, now of course, featuring uh, Ronnie Starks here. Woohoo, I work there. Yay! Yay! And now it's on the IndieWrestling.us, VODs. So go check that out. New releases from uh, RWA and IWC from this past weekend coming up very, very soon. And uh, beyond that, in the next week's Fight Society which you'll be at, will mm-hmm. also be available on VOD, uh, Angel Gate Wrestling, um, of course, Premier Championship Wrestling. We had Nick Lendl. So if you want to, uh, two shows just came in from Premier Championship Wrestling. Those will be going up here um, within the next day or so. Uh, so you can go check those out. You can rent them for a lower price or uh, buy them for a download and whatnot. Um, it's via Vimeo. So that works on many of the devices. So you can see it on your TV on your iPad, on your whatever uh, iDevice or Android device you have out there. Go check out everything at IndieWrestling.us, including the Indie Mayhem Show. We have a lot of great interviews, including MT OSHA. Uh, We have recently chatted with Bronco McBride last week on the show, and this week Marshall Gambino is going to tell you how it is in the indie scene these days. Just going to put it at that. That's coming up this Thursday on the podcast feed for the indie mayhem show and over at indie wrestling.us guys it is time to find out what did you learn from wrestling this week mad mike i learned that apollo crews can fail upwards what did apollo do i didn't see that part of raw um he gets put into the semifinals of the mixed match challenge just for existing (laughs) <laughs> how much of a hodgepodge mess is the mix match challenge for all the replacements they've done so far um the only teams that have not had to have replacements are the ones that are legitimately married <laughs> mahalisha and the fabulous truth huh that's it that's disconcerting yeah maybe they shouldn't run Two matches a week for 13 weeks. Yeah, yeah. That seemed like it was an overpromise. But. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, WWE. And also, Fine. Bailey says she wants Rey Mysterio as her partner next year. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Bay Mysterio. Bay Mysterio. They can do better than that. Can they? <laughs> You've seen Raw. You're right. It can't be really. You're right. <laughs> Um, I learned that the Edge and Christian uh, show is simply an extension of their podcast at this point. Because mm-hmm. um, about every gag from the podcast has been realized in season two. Um, <laughs> Sorg, Sorg, do you think we actually get a Paul Smackage? I think there's definitely going to be a Legend of Paul Smackage. Okay. I think like, they're going to do like a Like WWE 24 Paul Smackage. I don't know. They got to happen, right? We learned this week about um, Neil Nascaris, the Dutch luchador, um, <laughs> who, resem- watching, who yeah, resembles amazing. Shawn Michaels. I'm, still, I'm tr- still trying to figure out who the trainer was because he had a nose, and I thought it was EC3. We were up in the air with Kurt Angle and EC3 when we were watching it late last night. Well, it was probably someone from NXT because that's where Shawn was when they filmed the stuff. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Okay. Okay, that does. Um, between that and the Ico Pro and the uh, the Moonies, the uh, Goonies ref they did last to find mm-hmm. Sean Mooney's mm-hmm. pants, which is a thread from season one, actually. Um, yeah, this is um, Samoa Joe Girl Scout cookies. Um, it's it's uh, it's the best stuff on WWE Network, and I'm counting NXT, so <laughs> it's 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 pretty good. And and again, we talked about the innuendo. Holy crap! Did they go the full? Uh, I, I posted that picture from the Goonies where I, I they they had um, uh, blurred something, and for some reason I accidentally screen capped it. Um, there was mm-hmm. a, there was a lot of like gestures happening there, so go check it out as a Christian show for sure. And that podcast, even even the uh, replacement stuff they've been doing the last few weeks with Christian. I think I think Edge in that Mooney segment was actually cosplaying as Chad the Shad. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. if he was just wearing a hockey jersey, it would have been complete. <laughs> Larry, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I learned Mustafa Ali is fickle. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, but, uh, 
<laughs> what about you, Ronnie Starks? Absolutely nothing. Oh no! Wait, wait. I uh, I haven't I haven't watched wrestling in uh, about three months. Why <laughs> <I watched wrestling? laughs> you can still learn. What, what do you do at your own show? Why are you here? You're like <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. I, I haven't. You won. don't watch the monitors, brother, brother. <laughs> I watch indie wrestling. I, I haven't watched. Like, That's fine. You I, can learn yeah, from you, what happened you can this learn weekend. From indie wrestling. Uh, what, what did I do this weekend? Oh, uh, don't let your face on fire. There ah, you go. Don't let your face on fire. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> I can't believe it let his face on it. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I think producer Missy saw him the next day, and and he was a little singed. He, he singed his beard. Stop doing dumb things, bro. Please. <laughs> We love you, Sean. Peters. He's gonna have his comeback match against Ric Flair. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I learned. Your name is Phoenix does not mean you have to burst into flames. Oh, jeez, jeez, man. Oh, well, that's not the gimmick. I assume it was. Is that... uh, well, it is now apparently. <laughs> what, what did you learn, Missy? Jesus, she has her noise canceling headphones on. She's not listening to us. She'll find out in a minute. Um, also, Alex Bears let us know that he he goes to tournament of death matches. Um, oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, man. <laughs> hey, man, to each his own. It's cool. It's cool. Um, also, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 13 card looks amazing. Oh. Uh, we'll probably touch on that next week since that'll be the last live show I think before Wrestle Kingdom. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't wait for Wrestle Kingdom. You're so excited finally for something that. something good to talk something about. Something to sink our teeth into there, right? I think I'm gonna take that day off. That way I can stay up and That's, just watch it. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat there, yep. too. We're going to get our ramen, watch all what, what of World Tag League going? right beforehand. What's that? What what day is Wrestle Kingdom? The 4th? Yeah, I think so. January I think 4th? I think it's like Friday into Saturday this week. Yep. This it's week. Friday into Saturday. Oh, okay, it's Friday I have to, then Friday I have to go film a wrestling show that night. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. Bro, you're not sleeping, man. Oh, just, no. Yep. No, I'm going to sleep. It's just I'm going to wake up and go to a wrestling show. <laughs> So I mean it's it's rise so it's not it's only yep. an hour away. So. Get ready, World Tag League straight into Wrestle Kingdom. As a rule, I don't take wrestling shows. Okay, as I see this and I, re- I realize I'm going to Erie and Dayton like this month. <laughs> as a rule, typically I don't take wrestling shows more than an hour away. So you know, um, that's changing though. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just contradicted yourself, right? I you're just like, did. I did. Like, I don't, but I am driving two and a half hours. Give me a violation. Yeah. Like, God, God damn, I'm just going to throw my whole clipboard at you at this point. <laughs> Jeez. I haven't given you one yet, you know? Ronnie Starks, what? Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter machine that I never use, at Starks Wrestling. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, at the Ronnie Starks. And you can add me as a friend on Facebook, at Ronnie Starks. No Snapchat? Oh, uh, no. No Snapchat. I don't know why I'm asking. We have Snapchat. Well, do you want my phone number, my social yes, security yes, number, my yes. date of birth, uh, yes. where I reside be, in? Uh, we, will be, we will be Ronnie Starks. What, what size my penis is? Do you, what, what all do you need from me? <laughs> the uh, street you grew up on, your oh, pet's first up. name. My pet's first name. Yes. His name is Sparky. <laughs> your pet's first name. <laughs> uh, oh, so we had a couple more rolled in. Uh, Brandon learned that the internet hates everything Monday Raw is showing. Yes. Yep. Uh, Shane learned that getting... Getting tickets off of Ticketmaster for TakeOver for Mania is cutthroat and savage. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. oh, and I also learned that NXT's coming to Poughkeepsie. Nice. Was it like a, a WWE versus NXT thing? That's what it says. I don't think that's real, though, because the commercial I saw during Raw said nothing about that. Mm, have fun with that. Have fun with that. And if it is, I hope it's just Tyler Breeze versus someone. Mm. Because that would make my life complete. The hell I learned. Uh, Dan says he learned that if you tarp off the top level seeing seating, you can air a weekly episodic TV show with around two million viewers. Yep. Again, okay, there you go. Yeah, here in December, a very smart move. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. That's what you. That's what I'm doing the week between. Well, I hope you're not getting yep. any snowstorms. I, I'm either, hoping right? not. We're crossing our fingers. It'll be fine. It'll we all might be off. going up early. We might not. Might be coming back late. I don't know. We at least we at least we have a place to stay at least one night. So it'll all buff out. Yeah, they'll, they'll work out. See you guys. See you guys in a few weeks. Revenge, bro. <laughs> uh so. Uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of stuff going on. Check out PittsburghWrestling.com for uh, uh, information on a lot of the wrestling in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, I will be at I will be at Fight Society on Saturday. We'll have uh, some friends at 2PW Prospect Pro Wrestling. And of course, our friends down at West Bank Arena if you're down in that area in, in Wheeling. And also, 
Do I have friends on the other side of Ohio? Let's find out. Will you be at the Impact uh, Ohio versus Everything or Everyone um, um, show this Friday? I don't know if you'll be able to see me, but I will be there um, partaking in some business. Uh, so uh, go check that out or uh, check out on Twitch. I guess that was going to be a free Twitch as well uh, with Impact Wrestling. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to see what that has in store. It's going to be some interesting. It's going to be an interesting night one way or another, and I'm sure I'm going to have a story or two. Uh, hopefully I can tell you on the show next week after that. Uh, Mike, Mike, yeah, I'm going into Mike. the belly of the beast, man. Sorg. With, with Impact Wrestling. Going to get Sorg. mad. Mike, I'm blocked. <laughs> Tell them to unblock me on Twitter. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Why did you get blocked? I can't Twitter? guarantee I'm going to watch the show. I, again, I, I don't think the people that blocked you work there anymore. So, Well, someone's got to be running the fucking thing. I'll see what really? happens. Really? You, you think they are? <laughs> I think I know exactly who's running That's the thing. That's fair. But, <laughs> uh, Mike, thank you so much. Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. Larry, yeah. what are you doing in the basement that people can do? That can that, uh, that can help you with. Can oh can you give okay. Highly... What do you do? Um, what do you do? Yeah, if you need any uh, prop fabrication, set design, or I don't know, just any random cool shit, uh, go to darkforgestudios.co. We've had a lot, we have some wrestlers uh, put in some interesting requests already. Have they? I told you I'm not making fake weapons. No, not that. If part. They're gonna do pro wrestling. They have to hit them hit people with real chairs. <laughs> They are real chairs. All right, that was a request, and we did work through what that. If, so. What if someone requested a pinata full of thumbtacks and glitter? Oh, I can do that. No, I can't do that. I don't do glitter. Can I at least get one full of thumbtacks? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. And yep. confetti? Yeah. Then fuck, I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let oh, me know your rate, and Legos. Thumbtacks <laughs> okay. and Legos. Thumbtacks and Legos. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Just not glitter. There you go. That's my heart. That's my limit. Go check <laughs> out his line. stuff. I think you're going to have some updates here soon about some recent projects. Yeah, yep. We'll have some updates. Uh, we'll have some events coming up in the next month or two. So there you uh, go. Yeah, we should do a pro wrestling. You should do a pro wrestling escape room. Maybe. There Maybe. you go. Oh my god! That oh might be my first wrestling. post on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! It's it, it will not flood your feed. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, producer Missy. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.